roads on the border of Romulus uh, and the city of Wayne. Apparently, uh, chemicals or a chemical plant uh, has suffered some kind of explosion. Uh, we did hear from a witness on the scene that told us that after she uh, heard that loud noise, there was a gas cloud uh, headed her way. Police uh, and emergency crews are on the scene and hundreds of people are being evacuated from their homes. Uh, they were told to lock up their homes as tightly as they could, try uh, yes. as much as they could to uh, cover their mouths and not to uh, breathe in these chemicals that are headed their way. And not only was it something that she said had a very, very uh, strong odor to it, it was so strong it was burning their eyes. So this is indeed uh, something that could be possibly dangerous. So police and uh, hazmat crews yes. are headed to the scene now, and as far as we know, uh, there are dozens of families, perhaps hundreds of people in this uh, Who do area. we have on the phone with us, Frank? Our producer's talking to us. Lana Frank? Yes. Lana, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, tell me what's, what's going on where you are. Where are you, first of all? I'm about three blocks um, east of Wayne Road and three blocks north of Van Bourne, okay. and we can see the flames. Did you the hear? The whole sky did, did, is lit up orange right now. Do you know what is on fire exactly? Um, um, I have friends that live just a little bit closer, and there's, they said there's a chemical factory just um, west of Wayne Road on Van Bourne. Can you smell anything, Lana? Are your you eyes have, burning? Uh, you have kind of a chemical, smoky smell, but um, it's not too bad. And uh, the breeze is coming in this direction, but you can tell that there is a huge fire over there right now. What are police telling you as far as evacuation to get uh, out of there? Uh, they haven't gone to our neighborhood yet. And so we're, we're just kind of waiting, being that the, the uh, prevailing wind usually comes from the west. And, and what does it look like from your home right the now? The sky is just brilliant orange in that direction. It's just kind of um, <clears throat> southwest of my house. Do you hear a CEMS cruise en route? Oh, my goodness. We had 15 straight minutes of nothing but sirens coming from every direction. 15 minutes nonstop. And now uh, you are in your home, but you haven't received word if you should leave or if anyone's coming? Not yet, no. I'm, I'm kind of expecting it because just because of the direction of the wind. Is, I mean, there's very little breeze at this time, but you can tell there's huge flames. Actually, from what you're seeing, you probably want to get out of there. I'm kind of thinking that, mm -hmm. yes. I've got a couple of invitations. I may take them up you have children, within the next five or, or ten any, minutes. Children or pets you're concerned about, Lana, at this point? Yes, I do. I have, um, I have a service dog, and then I have two old, old dogs that I'm quite concerned about, yes. So I'm sure you have them inside with you. Yes, absolutely. And dogs like people become frightened as well. You know how our pets have to yeah, be Yeah, and they're, my, my couple of old dogs are really frightened of thunder. And these, we've had um, six explosions so far, and they're very scared. You've heard six explosions? Yes. And that was, uh, we heard um, four explosions uh, right simultaneously about a half an hour ago. And, the, oh, here comes another one. That was number seven. There's another one right now. Now, are you close enough to feel that? Are your, are your windows rattling? Um, the first few they did, yes. I'm outside right now. Okay. Uh, now, we've been told that police have uh, been telling some of your neighbors to go to the community center. Do you know where that is? Yes, yes. That's about a mile from here. Okay. Where exactly? Where are they talking about? The community center is located on the corner of uh, Howe Road in Annapolis. Hal Road in Annapolis. Yes. So again, we're going to recap that we have reports and we do right now know that there have been an explosion or several explosions. And according to you, Lana Frank, seven explosions in the area yes. of Van Buren and Wayne Roads. Yes. You are not as close as uh, the first woman we spoke to on the phone, but you're close enough in the area that you can smell and feel the effects of what we're thinking is a chemical explosion yeah. of sorts. And I've heard that um, they've closed off uh, Wayne Road as far south as he Waiting for my son to see if he can get home safely. All right. Well, now we have uh, Chopper 7 in the air, and you can see now uh, the sky lit up from a huge fire that is burning okay. at this Ooh, chemical plant. The uh, chopper zooming in on it right now. A, a huge cloud of thick black smoke rising from this scene. Uh, this is this is the, the cloud that uh, witnesses have been telling us about. It's Wayne Van Boren. Uh, Craig, can we t are we talking to Is that Craig Dennis? in the chopper? Craig, can you hear us yet? No? Okay. All right. What? The fire is just unbelievable. How close are you, Lana, again? I'm about, okay. um, I would say distance-wise, maybe a third to a half a mile, I guess. 
Well, that's I'm, relatively I'm only close. three blocks off Wayne Road and three blocks off Van Bourne, and it's just down Van Bourne, a very short distance. Right, that is relatively close yes, considering close. what we're talking yeah, about seven, seven, and yeah. what we're looking at right here. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Go ahead. So again, hazmat crews are there. We see EMS units are there. Uh, are people standing out in the area where you are right now? Oh, yeah. Are people out in the streets? Yes. And what a are they saying? A lot of people driving by. What are people saying? Are they frightened? What are yes, they saying? Yes, yes. Very curious. We've heard that it could have been a plane crash. Okay, we have made contact with Craig Smith uh, up in the chopper. Craig, uh, what is what is this we're looking at? Okay, I'm just getting uh, over this thing right now. Uh, I talked to the tower operator who let me in graciously and said that whatever this was, uh, was a, like a fireball that went into the air like 500 feet. It looks like some kind of a chemical plant, Frank. I'm just trying to get in position right now. I'm going to turn the helicopter here and get a little bit of distance away from this thing because it looks like it uh, might flare up again. There are, uh, It is some kind of a chemical plant, that's for sure. There are several uh, containers, whatever chemicals are in those containers, that uh, have exploded. You can see this huge ball of fire. In fact, I can, I can actually feel the heat from here. There's uh, black smoke billowing out of this thing that's sort of moving towards the northeast. I'm going to stay a distance away from that because we don't know what that uh, is burning down there. This is on the uh, corner of Van Bourne and Wayne Road. Uh, huge explosion here. Uh, you can see the fire uh, in the air right now. It's, it's at least 100 feet. The flames are, Frank, into the air right now. And Craig, we've been told that authorities are very concerned about that gas cloud that we're looking at. What what direction is that mainly blowing in? Uh, it's it's uh, heading towards the northeast, Frank. So the wind must be out of the south southwest. Um, light and variable, but nonetheless, it is moving towards the northeast. It is a thick, thick black cloud uh, that it is coming off of this thing. Whatever this is burning down here. Oh, there's an another little explosion there. Some whatever it is uh, is spreading too. Uh, there are railroad cars down there. I can see a couple of semi trucks of the uh, tanker barrel variety. Um, and I, I cannot get the name off this. I, I don't know what this is either. We're, we're trying to learn that information right now, but I'm, I'm not having any luck. Well, so Craig, we don't know what it is yet. Craig, any possible danger to you, depending on just where you're hovering? Uh, I can assure you that I'm not going to get close to this thing. No way. Craig, is that, is that uh, the direction that that cloud's headed in? Is it primarily residential or more industrial? Does it look like... Uh, there are more people in danger? You know what, Frank? It is moving towards a residential area. I hate to say that, but it is moving towards the northeast. Now, right near this is the Wayne Assembly Plant, not too far from here, uh, just maybe two or three miles to the northwest. Uh, wow, another big explosion. Did you just see that? Yes, yes. absolutely. Wow, huge explosion. I'm, in fact, uh, it looks like Wayne Road completely shut down. I can see all sorts of fire equipment down the street, and they're not even getting close to this thing. And as I mentioned, the tower operator even mentioned, he said, he said to me, he said, you know, I saw that thing when it, it blew up and it was a huge mushroom cloud, at least 500 feet worth of flames that were billowing into the air. You can see this thing still continuing to burn and whatever it is down there, more things are catching on fire and, and I'm backing off. So this thing is burning uh, so hot and it's so dangerous, Craig, that no one is even attempting uh, no to fight way. this fire at all. Oh my gosh, no. Nobody's getting near this thing. Um, in fact, they've got it blocked off. Uh, at least two or three blocks uh, east of Wayne and two or three blocks west of. I can see all kinds of emergency equipment down there, but they're not getting anywhere near this. Another thing to mention here, we don't know what even caused this or what started this fire. We had heard rumors of, of possible something else that, that may have crashed into this thing, but that doesn't seem to be the case here from what we're seeing. Looks like just whatever it... Uh, chopper 7, uh, negative, sir. And uh, you are looking right now at uh, a Sacred chemical plant that is that is just burning out of control. This is yes, Van Bourne and Wayne, Wayne Roads, right at the border of Romulus and the city of Wayne. The explosions uh, began more than a half hour ago. Uh, there have been uh, about eight, eight or eight ten nine, yeah. at this point. Some uh, there's another one right now. There there have been a constant series of explosions and flare-ups like that. Uh, as you can see, this entire plant is engulfed. There are firefighters hazmat yeah, crews and EMS workers on the scene, but they cannot get anywhere near this inferno. In the meantime, that huge cloud of smoke you see rising from the fire may very well be toxic. Okay, Emergency crews have expressed their concern and dozens of families, perhaps hundreds of people okay, uh, in the neighborhood to yeah, the yeah, north of like this, the, uh, have been told to evacuate and to go to the community center at Howell Road and 
Annapolis. So, uh, Frank, we're talking about eight to ten explosions. We can understand why they have made no attempts to get in there and try to contain this thing. It's not done, whatever it is. Absolutely. While uh, Craig Smith is uh, uh, tied up there talking with the tower, I want to go to the phone here and talk to uh, Ron. Are you with me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, tell us what you've seen tonight and where are you in relation to this chemical plant? Um, approximately a quarter of a mile. I live about a quarter of a mile from there. Uh, street over from it. It's an uh, environmental place. They do, uh, I think, uh, oil recycling or something like that. This uh, chemical plant, you think some kind of recycling was going on there? Yes, sir. And, and where are you? Uh, we're watching a huge black cloud come off this thing. Is that headed toward you? Uh, yes, it is. I can, I can see, actually see it from out my window. I wonder if anybody was working inside. There's a shift work, or who could anyone have been in the area? I know you don't know the answer to that, but I can't help but wonder. Yeah, actually, I think they, they do have uh, a couple of shifts that work there throughout the night. So it's quite possible that there were people inside the plant when oh, this yeah, explosion absolutely. happened. Can you smell uh, anything in the air coming from this run? Actually, I uh, got all the windows shut because they've been going around because there's, I, there's all kinds of chemicals there, you know. They said to shut your windows. Uh, so you have uh, had experience with this plant before? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. What experience, Ron? Um, the company I used to work for, we used to do business with them. Okay. So now, uh, aside from recycling, oh, what, what... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Any idea what kind of chemicals might be there? Um, uh, that I'm not really sure. I, I'm, I think there may be some kind of sludge or something, but I'm not really that sure about it. Did you just hear another explosion when you yeah, reacted yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, I can see it out my window. There's going to there's gonna be more. There's going to be more? Yeah, there's going to be more. I, I, there's, there's some other uh, sort of silos, if you will, that, are, that are, have these chemicals in it. I can see the top of them burning. Just saw, you just saw a couple of minutes ago of, of uh, one explode. There's many explosions uh, taking place all the time. This fire is fierce. Craig, do you think, does it look like this is all one property, this is all happening? Yeah, it is, Frank. It's, uh, I would say, maybe a, a block uh, square, I guess, would be a fair statement to say the, the size of this thing. Looks like we're going to have to see this burn through before we can even get near it. Yeah, they're not getting anywhere near it. They're, they're staying uh, several blocks away, as a matter of fact. And, you know, just a little bit east of this, too, is more of those... Uh, containers, whatever those are, with, with uh, whatever is in here, as the gentleman was on the phone, said it's some kind of recycling plant. But there's more of those uh, not too far away. So I guess the big fear is not only do we have this fire, but could another one spark just immediately east of that? And I'm saying it's a, maybe 100 feet away. Because it, it looks like uh, flames are not only shooting uh, hundreds of feet away, but obviously there are going to be a lot of embers from this yes. flying through the air. Oh, absolutely, Which without is a very doubt. dangerous, yes. Now, Craig, can you give us an idea of how close the neighborhood is to the north of this? Uh, well, it's it's primarily a industrial Ooh, area, Frank. I would say within uh, two to three miles. And, and now it looks like the smoke is sort of moving to the north. It's moving directly north, maybe over the the uh, area of Michigan Avenue and Wayne Road up towards the Livonia area. I don't think it's got that far yet, but it's moving up in that direction. Craig, do you see people evacuating? Um, I, I see police cars all over down here, and uh, yeah, it looks like they are in some of the businesses around here. I am seeing that. So this is roped off about... Uh how far from the actual fl flames do they have they set up the roping off? At least, at least a half mile, if not a mile. All right, quick, uh, Craig, we're just getting some information that what's burning here is the Environmental Quality Company, uh, and they're involved in a, a wide range of chemical activities, including hazardous and industrial waste treatment, disposal, and recycling, along with uh, truck and rail transportation. That's why you see uh, all the rail cars over there. You say these people have nearly 50 years, well, half a century of experience in design. Th they also collect Negative a lot of hazardous waste. Smoke. So uh, what's coming up in the smoke from this thing, uh, God only knows, because uh, they've got a lot of different mixtures of things going on at this plant. That's why it stinks so bad out there, you hazardous know, Frank waste. Frank and Diane, if I could say something here, uh, it I'm right over the top of the Romulus engine plant, General Motors engine plant. It looks like they're evacuating this plant. Uh, I don't think this is shift change time. It looks like they may be evacuating this plant as well. And how close is that plant uh, to this fire, Greg? Uh, it's in within about a mile and a half or so. It's uh, about a mile and a half to the south southwest. Yeah, there was another another little explosion there. I, I'm very, very concerned about these uh, these other containers east of this well, fire that's burning now. Well, anyone in management 
or, or anyone there who's possibly listening to Channel 7 right now, give us a call, please, here at Channel 7 so that we can talk to you about this chemical plant. Now, uh, Craig, I, I haven't seen any uh, signs of life around the plant, anyone uh, getting away from that scene at all. Have you seen any evidence of people on the ground no. anywhere near this? Nowhere, nowhere near Frank. Uh, I, I don't see anybody walking around, driving around in the in the immediate two to three block area here. The only thing that I see are a couple of police cars along Van Bourne Road, um, maybe two or three blocks from the fire. That's the only thing I see. Everything else uh, looks like it may be cleared out. Okay, because we were told by uh, uh, someone who said he worked for a company that that did business with this outfit that uh, it's quite possible they Chapter had seven, go. some late night shifts going on. Uh, so we don't yes, know if anybody was in the plant at the time of this explosion. What we do know is when, no, within the last hour or so, uh, several, probably as many as a dozen uh, explosions have rocked the environmental quality company, a chemical plant uh, on the border of Romulus and the city of Wayne at Van Bourne and Wayne Roads. There was one major explosion that touched off this inferno, uh, which you see burning there. Here is the location, Van Bourne and Wayne Roads, right on the border of Romulus and Wayne. And at this point, Frank, at least 10 to 15 explosions. And we do have a Channel 7 crew on their way. Channel 7's uh, reporter Cheryl Children will be there uh, in just minutes. And of course, she will bring us from the ground, which uh, she's able to get from the people in the area, the police or hazmat crews. We're waiting for Cheryl to arrive. But in the meantime, we have spoken to two people in the area. One lady and her family uh, being evacuated, told to get out of there, said yes, that uh, it was a very bad smell and that the eyes were burning. Uh, there was a sensation there. Uh, uh, even pets, even pets are in danger. So, I mean, this is this is huge, and uh, it's not going to be over in uh, in a matter of minutes. This is, uh, Action News reporter Cheryl Choden is, uh, is there at the scene. Cheryl, can you hear us? I certainly can, Frank. Okay, tell us where you are and what you can see from that vantage point. We're at the point. corner of Wayne Road and Ecorse Road, actually. We're about a mile from the plant. You can see that state police are right behind me. They told us not to go one foot closer to where we are. They said we could be in danger. They've evacuated the one mile square. I have some people with me who were evacuated and who saw that fireball. So, and then we'll talk to somebody who talked to someone in the plant. Let's start with Keith and Carol. Talk to me about what it looked like to you. Uh, when I seen it, it was a tall fire, a fireball shaped like a mushroom cloud and it was orange throughout the whole cloud. And uh, it looked appeared to be about a mile high or so, mile and a half. Keith, what, were you, so. what were you thinking when you saw that? Oh, I was terrified. I, it reminded me of 9-11. Uh, I thought it was an airplane crashed or something, and uh, I, would look, I was looking around for more planes. And Carol, what about you? What were you thinking? I was thinking of terrorist attack, plane crash. I thought of my friends at work. I had uh, co-workers that work over in the area on Van Bourne across the railroad tracks and they told us it was a chemical plant. I went up to try to go see if everyone was okay. They came in and they told us that it was actually the chemical plant that blew up. What did you think when you saw that fireball? I was scared. I was terrified. Terrified. Now I have to evacuate. I'm trying to get down to get my mother out of the apartments that's right in back of it, but they won't let us pass. So I don't know if they'll let her out, but I'm going to check into a hotel and have her to join me and my daughters. Amazing. A day goes on, just a normal day, and then this, it must just... Yeah, it's terrifying. Terrifying. Well, thank God that nobody was injured. I'm understanding no one's injured. We hope they're not. Oh, I don't know. I was asking uh, the police, was it a 24-hour operation? They said they didn't know. So hopefully... There was no one inside, and everyone is okay. Right, stay close, Carol. We might want to talk to you again. Now we're going to talk to Carl. His son was in the plant when that explosion happened, and actually a few moments ago he talked to his son while we were listening inside the plant, and we can get that to you later. But right now, Carl, talk to me about what your son said. Oh, he told me that uh, they were warned that something was going to blow and uh, for everybody to get out. Everybody did get out. Nobody got hurt, thank God. And. Uh, I'm just waiting for him to come out because he can uh, he's a little too shook up to drive home. So what did he say to you? They said, everybody get out, and then what happened? That, then the, the plant exploded. <laughs> and how did he describe it? I, you told he me... It was the loudest sound he's ever heard. <laughs> and he's heard a lot because he was in the Army, and uh, he's been around a lot of explosions in the Army, and he, he says... He's never heard anything that loud. And talk to me, because we don't have the interview when you were talking to him. How many people were working in there, he said? He said seven to nine people. Uh -huh. And he said everybody got out. Everybody's okay. Uh 
Uh-huh. And now they're keeping them down close to the plant? Yeah, they're keeping them in there uh, for what reason, I don't know. I know. Oh, my gosh. He must have been. And how are you as a dad feeling that he was in there well, during I know this? he's okay, so, it, you know, I feel okay. Yeah, he did yeah. say it was loud, though, huh? Yeah, he said it was loud. All right, Carl, thanks so much for joining me. And now we're going to talk to this young man who works at the airport who told me when people saw the fireball, Frank and Diana, they were crying because they thought it was a plane crash. Thank God it wasn't. What is your name? My name is Brian. Brian, what's your last name? Opalinski. Okay, tell me what happened. It was it was just, you know, something remarkable. I've, I've never seen that. We just looked up into the sky, and, you know, first we just felt the ground shaking. It felt like, you know, it some, something terrifying was going to happen. And, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, we just seen a, a huge fireball in the sky. It, 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 there wasn't even words to describe how bad it looked. And, you know, just the mood was just was just horrible. There was, you know, people that just looked so, you know, upset around the neighborhoods, around, you know, everything while it was going on. It, you know, everybody, it was just that moment in time where everybody just stopped and, and had a look at what was going on. Now, you work at the airport? Correct. Uh, at doing what? I'm a um, um, rental car manager for a dollar rent a car. And so. people thought it was, you told me people thought actually. Correct, correct. People it was like, you know, it, it happened, it happened. You know, there was, there was speculations, you know. Everybody was just like, what just happened? And, you know, we, we heard the sirens as soon as it happened. We looked around. We didn't see, we didn't see anything, you know. Uh, and, but, you know, just, just luckily, you know, nobody was hurt. That is, you know, that is the great thing. Everybody is okay. And that it was, I mean, not that an explosion is yeah, good, but it no. wasn't a plane crash. We're so Correct. thankful for that. While we're talking, I just want Marlon, if you can look at the plume in the sky, you can still see the glow up there. And they were telling, what did they tell you? To, did they say anything or announce anything at no, the airport? No, no, they just said, ever, ever, it was just all, all speculation. Nobody, nobody knew anything. And, and, you know, as bad as it sounds, I, I did think the worst. I, I really did because, you know, you work... You work so close or live so close to it, you're just, you know, you're just, you're, your heart, you know, just drops for a moment. And it's like that moment in time where, where everything just uh, honestly stops and, you know, you don't know what's going on. Did you actually see the plume? I, I seen it all go down. Like, I, w I was standing there. I felt the, the ground just shake. And it felt like, you know, an earthquake. And then we looked up and it, it, it looked like something just beat red was going, was going. And, and it just just boom and you know and then it was the loudest explosion i've ever heard wow that is amazing and brian what was your last name um opalinski o-p-a-l-i-n-s-k-i -I, I appreciate it stay oh, close in case we need you. so you can get a little sampling of the people who were evacuated a dad whose son is in the plant somebody who was at the airport and saw the whole thing three people saw the whole thing again they told us to stay a mile back and not get one foot closer and uh, now, can you hear us Yes, I definitely Because yeah. when you spoke to Keith, how soon after he received that warning did it actually go up? Did it explode? Well, he had said to me earlier, and we will later on play that interview, he said moments after, they said in the plant, everybody get out. He said within moments, he heard this loud noise, but he said everybody did get out. So, um, so whatever, so whatever uh, happened that caused this, this was an expected result of something that went on in the plant tonight. Well, it appears that somebody did something or saw something that, that would know that something was going to happen if they did. Let me just see if he is still here. I just wanted to ask him, let me see if he is still around for a second. And also, Cheryl, the yes. last gentleman you spoke with says that he thought the worst when it happened. Just curious, would like to know what was that worst? What did he think this well, could Diana, have possibly been? People, in the, in, people who live near the airport, when they saw something like that, I mean, God forbid it would be, but they thought that a plane went down. And that and, and that those memories of, you know... Of, of you 255? Know, the, yes, and so mm -hmm. I'm sure that everybody at first, when they saw that explosion and heard the noise, were so fearful that something like that had happened. And when we started heading here, it still was unclear for sure what had happened. And so actually, even though a plant explosion and an evacuation, it's not good. It is way better than what it could have been. I what mean, especially smell, if nobody's Cheryl? injured. You know what? I don't smell any thing right now we had asked Jerry earlier the wind is blowing from the south it's coming from um, the southwest to the north and we made sure that we came to this area of the corner because they did not want us to be downwind because they said right now they're telling people to uh, if they're in their homes they're trying to get them out if they're in their cars they're telling them to roll their windows up and to get out of the area because until they find out exactly what the plume is or was they want to be sure that everyone is safe
So all this smoke that we see billowing from the plant is blowing away from your location. Right. We are, we're, I would say we're at the southwest corner of where that, the plant is. So it's going southwest, Jerry said, to the, it would be to the northeast. And we had to make sure that we came to this corner. And actually, it's amazing. We got here, and within minutes, every other media outlet is here to knowing that this was the only safe corner to come to. And we're still a mile away, probably, a good distance from, I um, mean, you can see they're just not letting anybody go. We tried to get closer, but I mean, of course, we don't want to endanger ourselves either. Something all right, let's check in with Cap. You stand by, Cheryl, because I know you'll be out there all evening if necessary. Let's check in with Captain Craig Smith. Craig, what can you tell us? Well, Diana, just a couple seconds ago, uh, while you were on the air here, I just saw another explosion uh, just on the southwest side of this fire. It looked like another one of those uh, containers, storage containers, just blew up. And I just spoke to Metro Tower. Um, he told me that the winds were shifting from the north or from the south west now variable out of the south so that stuff is moving to the north as cheryl mentioned a thick black smoke uh, i can see it going north for miles and miles i can also tell you looking down right now all the businesses in about a oh i'd say at least a mile or two square area are being evacuated here it looks like the romulus engine plant is being evacuated to my north is the Michigan truck plant. It looks like uh, people are evacuating that. There are several businesses underneath me right now, smaller businesses that are being evacuated as well. I can see several police cars going in and out of these buildings, asking folks and telling folks that they're gonna have to leave the area. So with the debris f flying in the air, the several businesses that you were just talking about, none fortunately have been affected so far by the explosions or by the fire? No, no, I, I, it looks like the fire is, is contained to that area and that area alone that corner of, of Van Born and and Wayne. Uh, stand by. Uh, negative, sir. They're not getting anywhere near it. My apologies, Diana. The tower is talking to me. You can see another explosion. Look at that one there. At, at least a couple of hundred feet in the air. Uh, the tower uh, keeps asking me questions. Obviously, they're concerned about the aircraft uh, that are coming into Metro Airport. And, and in all honesty, it's only about three miles away from the uh, from the airport. So. That's all right, Craig. When they it, ask you questions, this is live television. You tell us. This no, is what I, it's I about. That. You're there right now. We want to know. Craig, yeah. is that is that where's that smoke blowing in relation to the airport and the and the landing uh, uh, well, area? Well, the airport is is southeast of here, about three miles, and the smoke is primarily blowing to the north uh, right now. I don't think that there's any imminent danger of planes going through this, although the tower operator did caution several airplanes that were on final about the toxic smoke. But right now, this isn't going to affect the traffic uh, uh, in and out of Metro. No, at this time, I don't see where that's going to affect anything. Uh, he did just ask me, says, are they putting any uh, water on this or any chemi you know, chemical uh, uh, foam or anything to try to get this out? And I answered, no, uh, they're not getting anywhere near this. And they aren't getting anywhere near this. They're staying a distance away from this. It looks like they're they're afraid to go near this thing for fear of more explosions. They don't want anybody else to get hurt. Or, in fact, we don't know if there are any injuries, but certainly uh, we don't want anybody else to get close to this where they could be injured. Um, I can see off of uh, uh, Wayne Road and Van Boren, uh, in fact, a little bit uh, east of that. Ooh, there's another big one. Yes, Look at that. Yes, we could see that. Wow, that just happened. And oh. wind speeds would be very, very critical right now. We need right. to know that. So it's probably time for us to check in with our chief meteorologist, Jerry Hodak, to tell us about these wind speeds. Jerry? Well, I think, Diana, very fortunately, the wind speeds are very, very light and have been, uh, winds have been almost calm across much of the area during the past couple of hours. Out at the airport right now, they're reporting southerly winds at six miles an hour. That's at Metro, which is not too far away. Uh, and uh, those six mile an hour winds have been fairly steady out of the uh, south. Now, we also have up on uh, Doppler radar what we call our METAR reports, or uh, there are indications from uh, various locations around Metro Detroit to the direction of the winds, and also you can see a small number next to each of those arrows. Some of you at home probably can't read the numbers, but I can point them out to you. Uh, this is a uh, southerly wind at about five miles an hour here, uh, just to the southeast of Ann Arbor. Uh, southern Wayne County, a southerly wind at five miles an hour. Up in Oakland County, southerly wind at four miles an hour. So you can see the winds are very, very light. They're all coming out of the south to the direction of the arrows. So the winds um, are blowing the, uh, the uh, flames and the smoke from south to north, somewhat in a northeasterly direction as well. Uh, but uh, the winds are very, very light. Fortunately, they are no higher tonight and not likely to uh, get much higher than they are right now, which is anywhere from uh, calm up to about six or seven miles an hour. Well, that's a blessing, Jerry. All right, thank you, Jerry. Even though that uh, is, is headed toward uh, a residential area to the north of there, it is keeping it away from the airport. 
uh, and the south side of the uh, situation where Cheryl Choden uh, has been talking to people tonight. This is Van Bourne and Wayne Rhodes right on the corner there. The Environmental Quality Company, a chemical plant uh, that does hazardous and industrial waste treatment, disposal, and recycling. Explosions happening there within the last uh, hour to 90 minutes or so. Uh, too many to count now. Obviously one that started this uh, huge fireball. The, the entire plant engulfed in flames. Fire department, emergency workers, hazmat crews, all on the scene, uh, but absolutely cannot do anything but watch uh, as this burns. And that started at about 9.15. We have someone on the phone now who actually delivers in the area. Frank Tabazinski. Frank, are you there? Yes, wow, ma'am. Look at that. Look at that. What can Boy. you tell us? Where, what do you deliver and where? To this plant or to another business in the area? I delivered right to that plant and I deliver like all the chemicals like uh, gasoline, meat products, uh, buckwheat, alcohol, you name it, it's in that plant. That's what's Look blowing that. up right now. Well, oh you have gosh. any idea, I mean, just your wildest wow. guess, of what could have triggered this tonight, Frank? No, I couldn't, because they're pretty safe with their safety record, Matt, but other than that, I don't know what could have happened. Did you make a delivery today? No, ma'am, I did two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay, uh, Frank, stand by. I want to go back to the chopper. Craig, uh, obviously these explosions are, are tremendous. Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe it. One or 200, 300 feet in the air. Uh, unbelievable. And, and there's more to go. I mean, uh, I just talked to the tower operator once again, Frank, and I did ask him, and he did confirm that there, are, there is no delay f uh, on the arrivals because of this so far. Uh, because the wind is going to the north. They're, they're, although the, the aircraft can see it, the jetliners that are on final, they can see this, and they're asking questions about it because they're certainly uh, curious and concerned, but it isn't causing any problems for them landing at Metro right now. But you could see uh, flames just ripping through this thing. They're rifling in the air with some two, 300 feet, and uh, there, there's no end in sight here. Th I would uh, say that this is going to burn for quite some time. And again, I am extremely concerned about the... the, the uh, cylinders of whatever this uh, stuff is to the east that's probably why they have people evacuating absolutely on, the, uh, on what looks like to us craig on the screen would, would be on the back side uh, on the other side of those flames are those some kind of storage tanks back there can you see that just to the right uh edge of the where the flames are correct uh, what do those look like? Are, are those storage tanks or? Yeah, I, th I think that's what they are. They look like some kind of storage tanks or whatever they, or tanks that they would uh, use in the refinement of whatever this waste uh, material is. Um, what's on fire now looks like they may be the storage containers and even east of that, which I'm, I'm not gonna be able to see here right now because I'm west of the fire, uh, looks like the same type of cylinder type containers. Well, now we're told that there's a little bit of everything in there from, from gasoline to alcohol that is fueling this fire. And it looks at this point, uh, Craig, like the explosions are virtually continuous. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're going off uh, every few minutes. Uh, and the hotter this thing gets, uh, the tremendous heat is, is causing these other cylinders to, uh, to go up. I actually saw a little bit of fire on the top of one of the cylinders, and then moments ago, it blew up. So um, the, the, the flames and the fire continue to burn here. And again, no fire department is getting anywhere near this thing for fear of somebody else getting injured. Because, uh, in fact, you can see it, Frank. See right there on the top of the screen? Yes. Uh, you can yes. see that uh, cylinder burning. Yes. One of That's what happened to the one uh, just a few minutes ago before it actually blew up. So that one probably going to go up as well. All right, Craig, stand right there. Frank Tabazinski, are you still with us? He's gone. All right, we're trying to figure out, if, because he does deliver to this particular plant, what could possibly be in those storage tanks. Craig, Craig are you there? I am. Okay. Th this looks like it's... Uh, as intense, if not more, than when you first arrived. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely worse. We've been here some 15, 20, 30 minutes or so, and uh, it's, it's uh, probably twice uh, the fire that it was when we first arrived here. When I just picked off a of Metatol Airport, which is only uh, less than five miles from here, I could, I could see it, uh, and I wasn't even you know, 50, 100 feet in the air yet, and I could see it, so I knew exactly where I had to go. Uh, there's a series of piping that looks like may connect these uh, cylinders uh, for whatever is in this stuff. Um, and I can see several vehicles down there of the cylinder type of semi-trucks. Look, looks like they were bringing some kind of material into this thing. That truck's just sitting there. Looks like whoever drove it in abandoned it and left. 
Um, I still see evacuations taking place down here. Um, in fact, there's a neighborhood to the northeast of this. I can't tell you the roads, but it's south of Michigan Avenue. I see all kinds of flashing lights down there. Police are evacuating homes in this area to the northeast where that smoke is blowing from the south to the north. And we are told that police are uh, advising people to go to the community center at Howell Road and Annapolis. The good news when this happened about 9.15 uh, is that we're told there were seven to nine people at work in the plant. Uh, the warning went out that uh, something was going to blow any moment. Uh, and by the time it did, it's believed that everyone did make it out safely. So as far as we know, uh, there's no injuries or death associated with this so far. But this fire has been burning out of control at Van Bourne and Wayne Roads at the Environmental Quality Company, uh, which specializes in industrial waste treatment and disposal. There's uh, everything we're told uh, from uh, gasoline to alcohol inside this plant. There are hazmat crews on the scene along with the fire department, but they can't get uh, anywhere near it. And as Craig mentioned, there are some evacuations going on right now. Cheryl Choden is uh, on the ground to the south of this fire. Cheryl, uh, what's going on on your side? Well, Frank, people are gathering here at the corner of Wayne and Ecorse Roads. Many of the people who saw this happen, joining me is Paul. He was driving down this road when it happened, and we're going to get one more description here. Tell me, Paul, exactly what you saw, what it felt like, what it looked like. It was unbelievable. I was probably about four miles south of the area, and uh, you could see down the railroad tracks and like down Wayne Road, but the flame was about four blocks wide and six blocks high. And actually, all I could think of was that it was like Hiroshima, because it was a cloud that was so large and so wide, it was unbelievable. And you were driving towards it. What did you I do at the time? Well, I was amazed at first of all, and I was like, and it was actually, it was, it was something to be excited about, really, because it was excited, so Excited, you mean in an excited, in a frightening kind of a spectacular kind of way? Spectacular way. You could not even imagine what it was to see something well, like that blow up big one. from this far away. When you're looking down railroad tracks that were right at the scene wow. okay. and down roads, uh, four blocks wide and eight blocks tall and just flames like it was. I didn't feel it. But just to see the magnitude of the situation was amazing. Okay, Paul, your last name is what? Lukowitz. All right, I appreciate you speaking with me. Also, I wanted to tell you that Brian, who I had talked to, uh, Frank and Diana, earlier from the airport, was telling me that the airport was actually called to give some of their units and a lot of their um, fire units to this scene. So some of them have come to the scene. But we have seen some planes in the air. So, And we heard earlier that, of course, planes were landing. But right now we also heard from another woman whose husband was in the plant, although she was too shaken to talk to us on camera, that they are keeping the workers down in that area. Um, I'm sure in a safe area, but they want to speak to them to find out exactly what has happened. Again, I want to remind everybody, I am at Wayne and Ecorse Road, about a mile from the plant. They are trying to evacuate the one mile square area, and if people are in their homes and have not yet left, they want them to roll up their windows for sure. Don't try to go outside and see what's happening. Even the people in their cars are telling them to roll up their windows and leave the area as calmly as they can. So it's very, very important because until they can just decipher everything that's in the air, they want to make sure that everybody is safe and that no one is harmed in any way because so far uh, no one has, and that is such a blessing, really. And sure, well, what, what's happening on the ground right where you are? It, it where seems I am relatively in, calm. Right. Well, Marlon can kind of span around. You'll see a, all the media has gathered where we are, and a lot of people have gathered, people who have uh, relatives who work at the plant, and only about seven to nine people were in there but also people who are being evacuated. A few people have had their shirts over their noses. I am not smelling anything right now, and, and state Whoa. police are right behind me, so I, I really Did feel that, that if one? we were in danger, that they would tell us to leave this area. Well, Sharon, you said people who have relatives, people are relatives who have people working there at the plant, are they fearful that perhaps someone is inside or no, are they have they been made assured that they've been told is so far and they've you know in this day and age diana with cell phones everybody has a cell phone and like i said um you know carl the man we talked to first whose son works there was on the phone with his son and most of the people have been able to speak to their relatives and they know that right now that um that they are out although they are still down there you can see that emergency vehicles 
are still on the scene, Thanks. coming and going as, as we're re-reporting. Um, we heard some sirens go by, and, and we did see an ambulance. I'm sure there are ambulances on the scene, which I'm sure Captain can tell us, but that is for precaution right now. So we are worry-free that there is anyone inside that plant. Well, you know what? I mean, we're not at the plant, but everybody uh, who worked in the plant said that everyone on the start. shift, it was a late shift, uh, de did get out. At least that was what Carl's son told us. We had we listened to him on the phone okay. saying that everybody got out. But, of course, we're not there, so, you know, I don't know. Sure. Well, give us an idea as to how many emergency crews have responded at this point. Well, where we are standing, we have seen, I would say, at least... A wow, half a dozen, half a dozen. I, I can hear Frank in the background. There must be more Another explosions. Explosions. Another fire. huge uh, fireball just erupted from that plant, Cheryl. And you know, I'm, I'm trying to actually. I think they're just keeping us far back enough, and there's trees that we can't really see what is going on. I mean, they want us here for safety. So we've seen many, Diana. Just to answer, maybe six or seven vehicles go through, and some large trucks too. Which one was like some sort of a hazmat control? And they haven't given us any update Look on the that. hazmat. We, we need to. Well, That's the biggest that. one. Listen yeah. to Obviously. Captain. Sure, you, you can hear the, the reactions because uh, uh, what we're looking at here from Chopper 7, uh, the overview of this plant are uh, more explosions, possibly these uh, uh, cylinders containing chemicals, but there have been in just the last 30 seconds or so uh, at least two, maybe three huge eruptions. Uh, how high would you say those flames are shooting, Craig? 300 feet easily, Frank. Oh, Frank. Wow. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I can tell you that this fire is so hot that it's triggering other explosions. I also see a grass fire, which uh, they needed like a hole in the head to the west of that. So, And they can't get anywhere near that to put that out. And uh, I don't know how far that grass goes, but uh, it, it certainly could affect some of the other businesses to the west of that. And they can't get anywhere near that to put that out. Because even even without the threat of more explosions, and obviously there's another one. Absolutely. Uh, Look at that. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, I mean, at least 300 feet in the air. And I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know how they're going to get this out. I really, so really don't. Can you feel any of the intensity of this fire? This well, you know what? When I got, I'm not going to get too close to it because the tower operator said, hey, when this happened, if, if you're just joining us, he said he saw the mushroom cloud it, and it rifled some 500 feet in the air. Now, those guys are trained in that tower. They can, they can pick out altitudes pretty good. This so thing. I got to believe what he's saying this is, is true. So 500 feet in the air, I mean, uh, that's why I'm staying a good distance away. There's still a lot of black smoke that continues to uh, pour out of this thing and move. Now it, the winds have shifted a little bit more, and now it's moving up towards the northeast again, from the north to the northeast. So the winds are shifting. Um, that, this is that, going to be burning for a long time. This, this is, is going, going to be, be burning, burning for a very long time. Look, look at that right now. Ooh, Check that no. out. <laughs> Another 300-footer. Amazing. And Craig, uh, you are the only one who is able to give us this vantage point of this fire right now. Uh, there is no other look at this blaze going on than right here from Chopper 7 uh, well, on Action News. This is an incredible view of, of one of the, the worst spectacles uh, I've ever seen uh, when it comes to an industrial fire. Same well, I here, agree. Fine. And, you know, we had that fire downtown uh, a month or two ago. Uh, just a little bit east of the Fisher Building. I thought that one was a fair size fire, but in comparison, uh, this blows that one away. I mean, this, this is certainly just, uh, the flames are so ferocious and, and rifling out of there so high, absolutely incredible. And again, the, the, the intense heat is, is triggering other explosions. That's why we're seeing that constant, like right now you're seeing that, uh, things exploding as we watch this live on TV. Um, and certainly a concern uh, for the smoke. Um, although the, the good news is, Frank, if there's any good news out of this, the smoke seems to be heading up, up into the atmosphere. I don't see it settling down onto the ground, which is great news. Um, the winds are, are of, of, a, of, a, of a slow speed that it's not settling to the ground. So it's actually going up into the atmosphere. That's the good news. Um, the bad news is the fire department can't get anywhere near this thing to even come close to be uh, able to put this thing out. Craig, I was really happy to hear our chief meteorologist, Jerry Hodak, say that the winds in the area are relatively calm, and uh, that's actually a blessing with this going on out there. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, well, I'm at 2,000 feet right now, and I'm, I'm climbing a little bit higher, and uh, the smoke is some 1,000 feet uh, above me. 
So you're talking about 3,000 feet MSL, mean sea level. So, you know, the, the smoke is, is fairly high in the air right now. Although I can still see um, cars, uh, police cars on the ground going door to door telling folks, hey, you might want to get out of here uh, and leave the area because we've got a chemical explosion with uh, hazardous material and hazardous smoke involved in this, so they are evacuating the area. Cheryl Chodes is on the ground. She told us that earlier. I can see the Romulus engine truck plant, uh, uh, engine plant down here for GM. They've evacuated that plant. It looks like the Michigan truck assembly plant. They've ev evacuated that, and all the businesses in between. Uh, police cars are still going door to door asking folks and telling folks to leave and what's going on here. Does it appear that the people are evacuating in an orderly fashion, you know, no panic going on at this point? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I don't see any panic at all. Uh, they're just leaving, they're getting away. They don't want to be anywhere near this thing for obvious reasons. This is the uh, environmental quality company that specializes in industrial waste uh, treatment, disposal and recycling. There are a number of uh, toxic and, and dangerous chemicals uh, at this plant, uh, including alcohol and gasoline. Uh, this has been going on now for about an hour and a half since an explosion first uh, rocked this company at Van Born and Wayne Roads. Uh, since then, there have been uh, too many explosions to count, uh, one after another, uh, sending fireballs, uh, uh, Craig Smith is estimating, uh, 300 feet or better uh, into the sky and causing an intense heat. Uh, even if it were not for... Uh, the threat of more explosions and the toxic danger of that cloud. Uh, Craig, the fire is too intense uh, for anyone to approach it. Look, Look at, at that. that. There's Look, another one. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's going on all night long. I mean, since, since this thing started. And, uh, you know, it continues to go. And, and that's, that's the bad part. They just simply can't get close enough to even put any water or foams or some kind of a chemical retard to get it on this to even begin to put it out. And it seems like it's just a matter of seconds when you see fire atop the storage tanks, just on top, boom, it goes. You, absolutely, Diana. And and if you can see just a little bit west or, or to the left of your screen here as Judy points the camera down, you can see the uh, the fire there on the ground. That looks like, oh, there's another one. There, that That is like a, a grass fire uh, that seems to be spreading a little bit. But the, the explosions continue to go off because of the intense heat, because they can't get anything on this to put it out, to cool it down, to get this fire under control. Out of control for sure. And uh, this could go on all night long. We want to keep our eyes on that grass fire, hopefully that it, they, uh, it doesn't spread close to the other businesses in the area. You bet. And it also, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit closer now where I can see visually. Uh, it looks like there may even be a truck down there on fire as well. Yeah, it looks like there is maybe a vehicle down there that is, uh, that is on fire, too. Um, yes, we can see that, yes. And once again, you are getting this exclusive uh, look at this fire only from Chopper 7, uh, the only view from this particular vantage point uh, to allow you to see what's going on here. While we're looking at this, Craig, I want to talk to Joe Mason on the scene. You bet. Uh, down on the ground, as you said, uh, police have been going door to door, evacuating people from their homes. Uh, Joe, are you with some evacuees? We are, Frank. We are at the Wayne Community Center, which is about a mile away from that fire. This is where some of the people who've been evacuated are coming to. We've seen about 50 people inside right now. They are bringing in uh, uh, blankets and pillows, some expecting a very long night uh, here. Right now joining me is Bob Roberts. You live very close to very the scene close. of that fire. Yes, we, we live about, uh, actually say a half a block north it's just there's a school between us and van born we're the first house what did you see well we're in the house and everything happened to just blow up and a bright light we knew something happened we went outside and then we seen the flames yeah, tell me how you were evacuated how did you find out well we were there for a while and a lot of people started coming over there's a parking lot beside our home and there must have been 50 people there looking at the fire and then the, the ambulance came by announcing that the uh, evacuation was starting to start. Describe how everyone did evacuate from the scene. Was it orderly fashion? It seemed to be, yes. There was a lot of cars that were going over to it, and they were being blocked off, and they were turning around going the other way. What were you able to uh, take out of the home before you had to come out? My dog. Let's show, let's show Colin right now. You can see everybody bringing everything they can. Of course, a dog is a member of the family. Colin here is, uh, is trying to uh, do the best he can. Also, Roxanne Wilshire is here. Roxanne, you also saw that. Right. You 
ball of fire. Describe what you saw. We were driving down West on Michigan Avenue, and uh, Lauren saw the orange sky, and she said, look. I turned around, and it was a huge ball of fire, largest I've ever seen, and then an explosion and black smoke. And, and we you- drove home, which is about a quarter of a mile from Michigan yeah, and Wayne Road, up. and it was raining plastic. Yes, sir. So, the and then like the next thing we know, the police were telling us to evacuate the neighborhood. Tell me uh, what you actually saw. I mean, were, did you smell anything in the air? No. Any kind of no odor? Did, did you, Lauren? Um, no, not really. Like now, it's kind of smelling kind of like funny, but not right away. Like you couldn't smell anything, and it was just. Oh, look at it's, that. It was, it was just. It, you thought it was hail. Like you would think it was hail because it's coming down so fast and so hard. Yeah. The first thing I asked my mom was like, is it raining? And then just the plastic was just everywhere. It was just... You've been inside there for a little while. What have they set up for you inside? They have tables and chairs. Um, They're making it comfortable for the people that are coming up here. So they weren't really aware what was going on, but the minute they were informed, they seemed to be doing quite a good job of it. And the Wayne police, I have to commend them for the orderly fashion way they're evacuating the neighborhoods. Neighborhoods. You're hoping to get back to your home very soon, I'm sure. Somewhere. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. We are also told there is a church nearby here. They're also sending some people there for the evacuation. Again, we are located at Annapolis and Howell Roads at the Wayne Community Center. We'll stay here. We'll talk to some more people. We'll get back to you soon. Back to you guys now uh, in the studio. Before you go, uh, if need be, and we're watching more spectacular explosions uh, at this plant, uh, will these people be able to stay there uh, for the entire night? We are told they're uh, preparing for the long night ahead. We're hoping to get one of the officials uh, that will come out and speak with us. We are told a lot of those officials, though, are at the police department right now, uh, getting their organizing their plans for this possibly long night ahead of us. And okay. how many people can they handle in there, Joe? They have about 50 people inside, but as we, um, you could get a shot of the parking lot right now, you'll see some of the cars coming here. When we first arrived here, there wasn't too many people here, maybe about 10, 15. Uh, that grew to 50, and you could see some of the parking lot now is getting filled as more and more people are evacuating the home. We heard the evacuation radius around the fire is anywhere from about a half a mile to a mile. Uh, so as, as the night goes on, if the evacuation stays in place, we're expecting this to become a very, very busy place. All right. Thank you, Joe. Cheryl Choden is over at uh, Wayne and E-Course. Let's go back to her. Cheryl? Well, Frank, I've got a group of young people. They actually were down by the railroad tracks. If you can come over here, right when this happened, I mean, and we're hearing from a lot of people, but there were so many people in the area. And actually, when they came out, they had shirts over their mouths because they were evacuated and the police, and they started to smell it. So you guys come here and just one second tell me exactly what you saw all three of you you had your shirt up to take down tell me what happened we we thought we seen a plane and it exploded and i rushed ran stop signs and we got there for the cops got there you were there before police yeah. arrived and yes, what ma'am. did you see we seen explosions after explosions and what were you we're thinking we're gonna die oh yeah you were really I, thinking i, I do yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess chemicals uh, landed on a couple of people at Dairy Queen over on Wayne Road in Glenwood. So Now, you guys had shirts up over your, your faces. Yeah. Tell me why you did. What did you, did, did you smell or what? Yeah, I could smell a whole bunch of stuff burning. It was crazy. I wasn't trying to get no cancer or nothing, so. Yeah. What, 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 what did it smell like? Tell me. It smelled like a bunch of burning shit. You know, we can't say that on the air, so I'm saying, okay. What did you, what did you see? Well, what happened to first off was, like, we were sitting over at Andrew's house, and we were just sitting there, and then, like, there was this big light in the sky and this big boom. Yeah. So we all jumped in the car and ran, like, down to Wayne and Van Bourne, right at that gas station, and we started walking down towards it. There was, like, red and all this smoke and stuff. What were you thinking when you saw that? Um, like, I thought for sure something, like, a lot of people died. I thought, a, we thought a plane crashed into there. That's what a lot of people are saying and then um you know like all the cops came out and stuff told us we need to evacuate that we shouldn't be smelling the air we shouldn't be around and uh then we like went all around here looking and stuff seeing all the explosions like there's a bunch of pops and all this red and can you describe what you were smelling like it was like burning it was like I don't know. It was just like, you know, the smell when you smell like burning. Like dead body. Yeah, like burning gas, like burning, just like burning stuff. Okay. And we're not for sure. Like, I don't know. Okay. Cheryl, it's very right. interesting. One, uh, the young man said that uh, he thought chemicals landed on people. Where, where is that coming from? He said from? there was a Dairy Queen. That? I don't know what kind of, what did you say? Now, give it to me calmly here. What did you think you saw? 
at Dairy at Queen. The Dairy Queen. I got a call saying that one of my friend's kids got chemical burns. At like, the Dairy Queen, yeah. and that would be at what road? Glenwood and Wayne Road. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, these young people, they did see it. They're a little bit excited, I think, too, you know. When Any word to, on how severe those chemical burns no, could have been? he said they weren't that, they, I don't think they were that serious. They didn't have an emergency, a medical didn't come. So, and, and we have to confirm that, too. We're not even sure that that is true. I mean, I think these kids are hearing it from somebody, so we would need to confirm that, of course. And but they're shook up, too, and that was shaking They are. Up. No, yes. you know what? Absolutely. These are people, these are young people who have not ever seen anything like this. And we are hearing much the same from many of the people people who have been at the scene they are just uh, you know it's like shocking to see something that high into the sky and to hear and when we started when I first started you heard a man the young man from the airport say that it actually shook the ground so I mean I think a lot of people yes they are a little bit overexcited but I mean you can certainly understand why all right Cheryl uh, I want to go back to Craig if he can hear us because there have been several large explosions in the last uh minute or so as we've been talking. Craig, are you there? I am indeed. Uh, we have been watching uh, several more uh, incredible explosions uh, that uh, obviously you have seen as well, and it looks as if uh, some of those huge cylinders uh, to the right side of our screen that the fire was approaching have been engulfed. Absolutely, and we're just in awe up here, you know, just watching this uh, take place and watching these things blow up. And for lack of a better word, it looks like a, a couple of seconds ago, it blew the actual blew the lid off of one of these cylinders, and you could actually see, Frank, the debris uh, flying through the air and uh, landing, you know, 50 to 100 feet away. Um, it's going to happen it's, again, Craig. Look at every time we see fire on top of those storage tanks. You bet. Just then it goes up. Later, it goes up. Absolutely, absolutely. And and you got to wonder, you know, how do they put this out? I mean, what what must the uh, fire department be thinking now? You know, how do we get close enough to get this thing out? How do we contain this thing? And uh, you know, how do we keep it from spreading more to the east of the, where those other cylinders are? Because certainly those could go up as well because of the intense heat. There, there is somewhat of a buffer zone uh, around this uh, area that is burning the most intensely here in the middle, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Uh, there, there is a space, uh, and I'm guessing because I'm at 2,000 feet here, but there's a space of maybe 100 feet, 150 feet between the fire that's burning there now and the uh, and other cylinders. And, and you're going to have to stand by, Frank, the tower is talking to me. All right, to give you an idea of what's going on here, it looks like there is uh, actually much more than just the plant on fire. There were several uh, vehicles, several large trucks. I believe there to the lower left side of the screen uh, are uh, a couple of vehicles uh, involved as well in this fire. Uh, when we first came to it, uh, to the right of the screen where you see some of the cylinders the fire is still approaching, uh, there were many, many more. Uh, that had not yet been claimed by that blaze. But every yeah, time, uh, as you mentioned, that they started to burn from the top, uh, eventually we have seen large eruptions. And we're and looking that's what's now, happened too, now. at the map. And, the, and you can see the area, Van Bourne and uh, Wayne Roads. And, of course, that's on the border of Romulus and the city of Wayne. You can see it right there. Where we see what looks like a sun is a blaze of fire out there tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And you're joining us live. We uh, heard of the first explosion at about 9.15, and there have been 10 to 15 explosions since then. Uh, people in the area have been evacuated. Uh, Joe Mason did report that we, the Wayne Community Center uh, is now taking in people, and they are prepared for the long haul, Frank. They're prepared for all night long, and it indeed looks like if the firefighters can't even get near the area, this is going to be into the night, so they probably will be there all night. And down at uh, Wayne and E. Course Roads is uh, Cheryl Choden. Live, Cheryl. Frank, right now I want to show you a few things, and then we're going to talk to somebody from a GM plant that was evacuated, but spin around with me, Marlon. They brought in trucks now to clear the road, to cr I'm sorry, to, to block the road, because what has happened, actually, is that some some cars are trying, actually, believe it or not, to go through, and so, and when they do, the police are taking off after them. I don't know why they would try to take off, but some people are trying to blow through that light and get down by the plant, and they don't want them to. Sir, if you can join me for a second, I have someone here who works at a GM plant, and talk to me, and what is your name, sir? Uh, Dave Caruso. And Dave, you work at? I work at the Romulus engine plant, General Motors powertrain. And tell me what happened tonight. 
Okay, uh, it was approximately 10 after 10, maybe a quarter after 10. I am. They came over the PA system and said that they were evacuating the yeah, building. They wanted everybody to leave at the um, southwest Seven corner of the building. And uh, we were to exit the parking lot, go towards 275 and go south. And did they tell you why? Did you know or did you know uh, there would have been an explosion? Re we really didn't know until after we got outside. Um, as close as we are to that, I would have thought we would have heard something and felt something, uh -huh. but not at all. And tell me, working at a plant, can you just feel for what those workers must have felt when that, I mean, you know, do you, you know, working at a plant, you know things can happen. Uh, that's right. Uh, GM is always very, very careful uh, guarding against industrial accidents. Uh, we... I all the time. I so appreciate it. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. And if you can take a look too, you can see that people have just gathered at this corner because they are not letting people go any further. And any cars that we are seeing come out of the area are people who are evacuated and probably going to the location where Joe is. Or of course, many people would probably go to relatives' homes as well. But we've talked to several people over the night that just describe this amazing, you know, orange cloud that just exploded into the air. In fact, one young man told me that it shook his feet beneath him at, like an earthquake. So it has been, um, you know, quite an emotional situation for the people who have experienced it. But the good news is, is that at least what we are hearing is that no one inside has been hurt. We did talk to the one man whose son was inside. He called his son right in front of us and we had that interview and his son said everybody was fine. A woman over here also, her husband is down there. She was too shaken to go on just because of, it's just upsetting, although he is fine. And she said she also thought everybody inside the plant was fine. Cheryl, you can only imagine, let's just take a moment here. Those workers inside that plant, when they were told to get out of there immediately, right away, and as soon as they get out of there, boom, it goes up. Can you imagine how frightened they were? You what know, was going through their minds at I that time? I cannot. And this, the man that we spoke to earlier said his son took two tours in Kosovo, and he said he had never seen or heard anything like that explosion. And, and if you've been through a war situation and then you see this and say that, it must have been just amazing to see and to hear, and they must be feeling so fortunate that they were able to get out. Well, if you're just joining us now, you are looking live at a breaking news, developing story that has been going on since about 9.15, a series of explosions at the Environmental Quality Company at the border of Romulus in the city of Wayne. You're looking at live pictures from Ch uh, Chopper 7 at Van Bourne and Wayne Roads uh, after a series of explosions rocked this chemical plant that specializes in industrial waste treatment, disposal, and recycling. We are told there are several dangerous chemicals inside, including gasoline and alcohol, extremely flammable. We have been watching fireballs shoot as high as 300 feet into the air. A series of evacuations have been going on. Uh, dozens of families, hundreds of people have been rousted from their homes. Several nearby plants have been evacuated. Craig Smith is live in Chopper 7 over the scene uh, to bring us up to date on what's happening. Craig? Well, the evacuations continue to uh, take place, Frank. I can still see uh, police going door to door, building to building, uh, business to business, telling people to get away and, and leave the area. Um, the explosions continue to go off down here. Again, fire department is not getting anywhere near this. And Frank, if I could just say my apologies for the hesitation. As you can imagine, we were the first ones on the scene, but now there are several other helicopters on the scene, and there's a lot of uh, traffic at Metro Airport. Right now we got a little bit of lull in the action um, with them, but so I can explain uh, that this happened about an hour or so ago. Um, and the f flames and fire continue to rifle out of this thing. It looks to me like the wind is blowing out of the west to the east now, and uh, which is, is taking it to the downtown area, or at least along Michigan Avenue. The smoke is uh, some two to 3,000 feet in the air. That is the good news. I don't see it settling on any of the homes, although you know it, it's hard to say if those people on the ground can smell this or not. Uh, from what it looks like here at my vantage point, it doesn't appear that they would be able to smell this um, from the altitude that this smoke is ascending. Um, fire continues to burn. My concern is the chemical plant or a chemical cylinders to the east of this fire that's burning now. I'm worried about those going up. And, and as Diana mentioned, and as everybody has watched on television live here, you can see the tops of these cylinders when they are on fire. Not too much long after that, those things explode. There's one to the right. Uh, right to the uh, right there she's got it centered up right now that one 
uh, it probably won't be too long, and that one will explode. And you see how many others are around there that could potentially go up as well, Frank. And with each uh, eruption, this fire has grown more intense and more uh, spectacular. Uh, in fact, there are a number of, uh, of firefighters, uh, hazmat crews, and other emergency personnel standing by, but they absolutely cannot get anywhere near this inferno to try to knock it down. Now, Craig, you've been in communication uh, with the tower. And, and, and what are you talking about? And what are the concerns there coming from the uh, tower? I, I've asked the tower several times, is this causing any problems for arriving traffic? Um, he claimed uh, uh, twice, if not three times, that no, so far it hasn't been a problem for those aircraft uh, you know, entering the uh, airspace. However, he is, you, know, you are hearing that the uh, aircraft are asking, what's burning down there? What is all the black smoke? What's all the flames? And he's explaining to them that it is some kind of a chemical fire. So I'm not hearing any of the airliners saying that they are having any problems at all getting into Metro, which is great news. Now, you've been keeping your eye also on that burning grass near the chemical plant in hopes that look, this look at does that, not Diana. burn. Look, look at that. Just, just look at that. I mean, that is absolutely spectacular. And, and the thing about this whole fire is, you know, you really got to wonder, again, how they're going to put it out. Or are they going to be able to put it out? Or is this something that's going to have to just burn itself burn out? Itself are they just going to, you know, keep a, a distance and just contain the area and just when it burns out that's it or you know, when it gets too, to a certain point it will or it dies down to a certain point you know maybe they can get up there and and and, and put, do something yeah. put out you know whatever they can put out and keep the things on the east side of those other cylinders those other containers uh from going up into flames that's my concern that we that they're they are able to contain it right there at the chemical plant and that it does not spread to the other businesses in the area because there are quite a few in the area you bet this has had a huge impact, uh, as you can understand, on the neighboring communities. Many people have been evacuated from their homes. Action News reporter Joe Mason is over at the community center in Romulus, where many of those people are going tonight for a safe haven. Joe, what's the situation there? Well, we'll give you a live look at the front door. You can see the crowd is building here at the Wayne Community Center. A lot of the people who live around that fire, of course, are ending up here also.